You know, I was wondering where you guys have been. Come on in. Please say yes, please say yes. What should I make today? You promised the baddie a five-star dinner, but you can't even boil water without a YouTube tutorial. Thanks to Cook Unity, even those with skill issues will impress the pickiest eaters. Cook Unity is the first chef-to-consumer platform delivering weekly fresh meals from over 60 culinary masterminds all across the US. They have a super flexible subscription system where you can pause, skip weeks, and cancel any time. There is something to please everyone's taste buds. You can sort by ingredients, diet, chef, and even protein for my gym bros out there. Cook Unity chefs offer up a wide range of meals with over seven different dietary preference filters, including vegan, paleo, and gluten-free options. Tonight we'll be enjoying the blackened chicken with mango habanero salsa made by chef Jose Garces. The chicken picada mashed potatoes by chef Ruben Garcia, and my personal favorite, the crispy chicken cutlet with za'atar rainbow potatoes by chef Ainat Admoni. The best part is the meals are delivered fully cooked. This not only saves me valuable time, but also gives that luxury dining experience from the comfort of your home. Try out Cook Unity meals yourself by going to cookunity.com slash tsource50 or click the link down below and use the code tsource50 to get 50% off your first order. I know I promised you guys a house tour many years back, but the truth is we still had a lot of construction going on and projects around the house and it just wasn't ready. But now that everything is completed, I can finally bring you a full dedicated house tour. So with that said, let's head on over to the great room. I guess we can start with this corner over here. Uh, this was completely empty when we moved in. Uh, whoever did our closets in our entire house, the, the closets in the garage and the closets upstairs in the master bed, also did this really cool custom bar area. We also have storage for our drinks. Our wine cellar is in the middle, which looks a little empty. Usually it's stocked up. We gotta stock up really soon. I'm mostly a, a vodka drinker, so like this is my go-to vodka. This is imported from Armenia, isn't it? Armenia vodka, is some of the best. If you guys ever had the privilege of, of trying them out, it's nothing like the vodka you guys get here, unfortunately. Yes. But um, you guys probably have noticed that we have a lot of cognac for some reason. I don't drink cognac at all. I, I personally can't stand the taste, but I'm Armenian. It's Armenian tradition for relatives to come over and bring over cognac. So for example, if you're buying a house or you have a baby, just something to celebrate. Another favorite thing here is actually my Tesla shot glasses. These are freaking dope. Look at the shape of this. Like how cool is that? Me being a Tesla owner, I had to get these shot glasses. Yeah, that's basically it with the bar area. Let's circle around into the open living space. All right, moving on over to our living room. This is where we are most of the time. After we pick up the kids from preschool, they usually hang around over here. We watch something on our TV. This is, I believe, an 85-inch TV from LG. I don't exactly remember the names anymore, but this is mounted on a custom wall. We did really cool, like, stone material uh, in the back. I think it, it looks really nice. I'm really huge into stone. My wife, too. My wife loves the stone look, so that was the original idea behind this wall. We got a 60-inch fireplace. We love turning this on to set the mood in the evenings. Uh, Shayla loves playing around with the lights for the fireplace as well. She goes over here and uh, picks whatever favorite color she likes that, uh, that day. I think we can choose between seven different RGB colors, which is cool. Uh, we got five 10 inch speakers in the ceiling. We have a sub built in the wall. We get a really nice surround sound experience when we're watching a movie, especially if it supports Dolby Atmos because um, we get that immersive experience when it comes to like ambient sounds. We're watching a movie the other day. I kid you not, I thought it was raining outside, but it wasn't. It was actually from the movie scene. We could hear it raining in the background and that's from the rear speakers. So pretty cool uh, during movie nights 
And also every Sunday we get massages here. So like we put the fireplace on, we dim the lights, we put Zen music from the speakers. It is, it is an absolute vibe here. Uh, my wife does a lot, obviously, and I work seven days a week. So we need to de-stress on Sunday before we get ready for the work week. Notice anything different? We finally have a couch, or I should say a sofa. This was an entire series I made over a year ago. We, had, we waited like six months for the sofa to arrive. It was the wrong freaking color, so they sent that back and we had to wait another three months. We were sofa-less for like almost nine months. We were laying on the rug, so it, it feels nice to finally have a sofa. But yeah, this is our living room. Moving on to the kitchen. Oh, hello there. There's a story behind the islands. It's a funny story and a very bizarre one when we were first trying to buy the house. We didn't want the second island because we just thought it took up extra space. We were more than happy with just one of them, but the builders wanted to charge us $5,000 to not include the island, which makes absolutely no sense. Not only are they gonna save the $5,000, but they're gonna save the money from the materials used to build the island. So I'm, I'm confused why they wanna charge us. But regardless, we're, we're happy that it stayed because this comes in handy, believe it or not, because we use this mostly to entertain guests. And then the island over here is mostly for prepping the food. This is actually where the wife and I hang out in the mornings after I drop off the kids from school. So I would go make the coffee. We come here and we have a very long in-depth talk about the current weather or what our plan is during the rest of the day. Exciting stuff that, you know, husband and wife do. But uh, one of the things I love about this kitchen is the plethora amount of cabinets. We got cabinets for days. We got cabinets on the insides of the island. There's cabinets on the other side as well. I mean, we still haven't used the top row. We've been here, what, two years, three years? Two years, and we still haven't even touched the top row. So it's good to know that we're pretty much covered in the next few years for our storage needs. Over here on this section is where our dining table is. This is where we Dine. We added a nice giant painting over here just to add a bit of decor. Um, and this wall over here actually didn't exist. We had to put it in after we moved in so we can separate the kitchen from this YouTube studio. I didn't want to hear like the babies crying and the kitchen noises. Obviously when I'm shooting video, I need the studio to be extremely quiet. And I'll show you guys the YouTube studio um, at the end of it. This table actually opens up. We have a centerpiece inside. We can fit two more people. So during the holidays, like Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas, New Year's, and we have a big gathering, we expand the table over here. Um, I can hear our robot cleaning right now. Where is, oh, Susie, there she is. I guess I can introduce you guys to Susie, our robot cleaner. This is, he just stepped on her. <laughs> this is the normal, why are you running away from me? Why are you running? Narwhal. This is our new girl, the Narwhal Frio X Ultra. My wife hates robot vacuums. They never clean as good as her, and she would always end up cleaning after the robot. So we got rid of those two, and then we got this one. She does such a better job at cleaning our house and keeping it clean. How much more do you like this robot? I love it. Finally, a robot that my wife approves. Actually, funny story, um, she keeps our house so clean that we actually are saving money from our cleaners. Normally, we would have cleaners come in every Wednesday to clean the entire house, but since Susie keeps the first floor spotless, we now bring the cleaners every other Wednesday. We save like, what, $520 a month? Because they come in every two weeks now, so she's actually saving us money, which is awesome. And this is the other half of the kitchen. My wife is usually in this area. I don't even know what's exciting to talk about here. I mean, we've got stovetop, we've got the sink, <laughs> we've got a dishwasher. There's so many freaking cabinets in here that I'm still, even after two and a half years, I'm trying to remember where everything is. The only two drawers I know are the spoons, which is in here. Cut that out, cut that out. The only two drawers that I know are the spoons, which are in here. See, this is why you married me. Got a memory of a, of a clownfish. We have our trash compactor over here. Very exciting stuff. We love our trash compactor. And over here is our coffee machine area. This has become a morning ritual for us um, here at the Oganessian family, especially on the weekends. My daughter loves making us coffee. She would come here 
open the drawer, pick whichever pod she likes. Comes over here, opens up the Keurig machine, pops this in, and then makes us coffee. It's the, it's the cutest thing. And she knows exactly what size to pick for me and my wife. Like I like the large cup, and then my wife likes the medium one, so like she knows everything. It's what I look forward to every Saturday and Sunday morning. Okay, and right across from that is my third favorite room in this entire house, the pantry. This is also a morning ritual. We come in here in the mornings and after breakfast, um, I give my daughter one of these vitamins. I open up the lid and she picks her favorite color and she eats it and then she gives one to me. <laughs> I love that. Other than that, yeah, everything else is nicely organized. It's labeled, uh, so it's easier to find. We try and keep things very clean and organized throughout the house in case you guys haven't noticed. I'm sure you guys have noticed at this point, we have a very particular color scheme in the entire house, mostly white with gray accents, um, but we did our best to hang paintings and some green plants for that splash of color. That way it's not looking too much like a museum. We love the luxury look and the tiles play a huge role in that aesthetic. I wanted the floor to be the first thing you notice when you walk in and then the awesome view. When you combine those two first impressions, you get that wow factor and that's what I was after. Part of the reason why our floors are always looking spotless is because of Susie. Not only does she vacuum, but she also mops. We don't even have to use the strong suction power. The default normal suction power is enough to pick up everything. That's because it uses the top of the line suction power tech and zero tangle floating brush. It never gets tangled in anything. I don't have any pets, but I do have a wife and it's practically the same thing. <laughs> she sheds as much hair as a cat does, but none of the hair gets tangled in the vacuum, which is awesome. This vacuum is perfect for anyone who owns pets. It basically runs on its own. We literally don't do any maintenance. Her charging station has storage bins where she goes back and dumps the dirty water and refills it with clean water. Even the self-cleaning. After mopping, it washes and dries its own mopping pads automatically. I mean, everything is automated. We love it so much, we're actually thinking about getting a second one for the second floor, but I'm not sure how well that's gonna do with the kids up there. They're gonna constantly jump on it and play around with it, but um, it is pricey, I'm not gonna lie. But if you guys wanna check one out yourself, I'll drop a link to it down below. All right, now moving into quite possibly my most favorite room in this entire house, my office space. I would say I'm in this room about 80% of the time. The other 20% I'm in the YouTube studio shooting videos, but this is where I am majority of the time when I am running the channel, essentially. We got my battle station over here on the left, and then we got the wifey setup on the right. Um, this is also a guest setup and a backup setup in case mine goes down one day. But yeah, this is where the wife pretty much sits down to do her online shopping. This is where she plays Diablo 4 with me sometimes. I'm trying to get her into FPS, but you know, Baby steps, baby steps. And this is also where she's gonna be editing her videos. She's getting back into TikTok and Instagram, and I think YouTube, right? You wanted YouTube shorts as well, so she'll be using this setup for editing videos as well. But yeah, this is pretty much it. This is where I do everything. This is where I run the channel. Obviously, my YouTube channel, um, our store, techstoreshop.com, where we sell our mouse pads and other Amazon recommended products. I opened up an Amazon seller account back in October, which is doing really well. I also manage that. Um, and I also manage my wife's account. Not to go too in depth with the entire setup. I do have a full dedicated tour of this entire room. Uh, if you guys wanna check that out, I'll leave a link to it down below. And I also have two separate series of building both setups from start to finish. You guys can check that out as well if you're interested on how I put together both of these master pieces okay but the gist of it is i have a custom floating desk custom headboard both mounted against the wall we got quad displays and a custom pc all the cables are ran through the wall that's why you can't see any cables and they basically come out from behind the headboard um, i do use all four monitors every single one has its very own use case scenario um, the bottom one is a 240 hertz display 1440p this is what i use to game um, FPS like the finals or Modern Warfare 3 and the top display is mostly for immersive games like role-playing, racing, adventure and stuff like that and then both displays on the sides are 240 Hz 1440p 
from ViewSonic and I use these mostly for multitasking. Like I got my Gmail on the left and I got my Discord open on the right. All the monitors are pretty much being used every single time. The PC I'm using is Big Red version 4. It's a custom water-cooled, custom painted, custom modded build I've done I think over a year ago. Uh, we got a 12 9 MGK, 64 gigs of RAM and the RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition. I know it's outdated specs. I know you guys are grilling me in the comment section. It's long overdue for an upgrade, but I am planning on a massive setup makeover for myself where I'm gonna take it, this entire setup down and rebuild it from scratch, minus the tables. I'm gonna keep the tables, but uh, that project is starting in April, by the way, super excited for that. Um, but yeah, really happy with the setup, but I know I can do better, and the next version of this setup is gonna be so much, so much better and improved. I do want to talk about my wife's setup just a little bit. It does have a similar DNA in the sense that uh, the desk and the headboard are also mounted against the wall, but the mounting method is slightly different in the sense that I do have access to the back if I want to change up the cables or upgrade. She doesn't need multiple monitors. I feel like one single 45 inch OLED monitor is plenty for everything that she does. So that's why I stuck with a single display. And we do have a wall mounted PC as well. This is my uh, PC case's little stepsister. She has better specs than me though, which is which is funny. Uh, she has a 13900K with 64 gigs of RAM and an RTX 4090. So yeah, she's actually running a beefier system than I am, even though I'm using my setup most of the time. But anyways, yeah, more details. Um, if you guys wanna check out how the setup was built, I'll have a link to it down below. I definitely love the way the um, the dragon scale panels came out though. This is one of my favorite things about her setup and uh, she likes it a lot too. Over here is where I store all of my mouse pads that I like to cycle between whenever I get bored of my current design. I basically just come here, see whatever design I like, pull it out from the bottom and then I swap the pad and I bring the old one over here, unless it's dirty. If it's dirty, then I take it to the washer and dryer um, and I toss it in there for like, 10 minutes on a cold winds. Okay, we now offer custom mouse pads, by the way. You can go onto the site, techsourceshop.com and upload your own design and we will print it out and ship it to you in the highest resolution possible and the best stitching in the game. Or you can just simply choose from one of our awesome mouse pad designs. I mean, either way, you're getting the best quality mouse pad there is. Textorshop.com or click the link below. All right, it's basically enough about the office. Uh, let's head on over to the right side of the hallway. Uh, the first door on our right is our powder room, which is basically like a guest bathroom without the tub. This is where our guests come in and use the toilet, wash their hands, pretty self-explanatory. The next door over here on the right is our guest bedroom. This bed actually used to be our previous bed from our last house. When we moved here, we decided to leave it here in the guest room and give ourselves a nice upgrade in our master bed, which you guys will see soon enough. Our guests do have access to their own private bathroom and uh, I believe it's, a, it's either a 77 inch or a 65 inch. Um, I lost track of what TVs we put in each room. These are all given by LG to do a product review on the channel. So more likely than not, you guys can check out a full video on this. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for the guest room. Now we're heading out to possibly my second favorite room of this entire house, the single car garage. It's cold in here, geez. Um, but yeah, we basically converted our single car garage into a gym, also a storage unit. This was all custom made by a closet company. This is where I store most of my PC parts. We have like Christmas things over there, seasonal stuff that we take out every year. Whenever I need to do a PC build, I come in here and I grab a part and I take it to the studio and I build a PC. Um, and then this section over here, I'm usually in Monday, Wednesday, Friday, working on my gains or at least attempting to. Um, got a full Smith machine over here with some puny weights. We have an entire cable rack over here in the corner. This is where I'm usually at. Um, and then we got free weights over here on the side. Bowflex. I've had these for like six years, I think. These are awesome. You come here, you select the weight you want, and then you pull it out. Saves a ton of space instead of having like an entire set of different size dumbbells. This over here is probably my favorite thing in this entire garage. This is my oldest daughter's ride. We got her a 2023 Range Rover um, and she and her sister sits in here usually and we drive her around the community. They absolutely love this car. Um, when she's old enough, she'll start to drive by herself because you can actually turn the wheel using the steering wheel and there's a gas pedal down there as well. But right now, 
she's what, almost three years old. I don't think she's old enough to drive. But yeah, that's basically it for our gym slash storage unit. Let's go back inside. All right guys, now let's go upstairs to the second floor. Um, a, lot of you, a lot of you guys actually pointed out or noticed that we had no paintings or family portraits in the first, but now that we're all settled in, we did hung up family portraits of both our daughters, Olivia and Shayla, while they were born, or when they were born, I guess. And honestly, it does complete the look of the house. It just feels like there was more warmth added in the entire house, and I absolutely love the way these came out. Okay, let's, uh, let's go into the loft. So the loft has changed quite a bit since the original tour. Uh, number one, we no longer have that massive dark brown couch. I gave that to my mom and we basically transformed this place into our daughter's play den or play area. I would have to say this is probably their favorite thing in this entire area. I got them a ball pit recently. They both love to dive in there, throw balls at each other. Um, there's a lot of laughter. There's a lot of tears as well. They get along for the most part, but sometimes when they don't get along, it's chaos. It is absolute chaos up here. You guys will see a bunch of squishmallows all across this house. This is Shayla's favorite thing. Also Olivia's actually. They both really love squishmallows. Um, at this point, I think we have like 50 plus squishmallows scattered <laughs> in this entire house. We got some storage units here for their toys. A little table here where um, they can eat their fruits and stuff when we bring them food upstairs, no? I recently got uh, Shayla this scooter actually, Disney Princess scooter, she absolutely loves this. Um, and for one reason only, check this out. It's, <laughs> it's got lights. Anything with lights, she absolutely loves. Shoes with lights, beanies with lights, toys with lights, she loves it. Excuse me. I'm doing a house tour. One minute later. Um, oh, I do want to show you this side of the wall. Uh, this was a recent project I did um, with the TV. You guys remember that horrible, horrible white panels I added behind the TV? Since that day, I've been disappointed in myself and I know a lot of you guys were too, but that was like a four hour project at most. I had to put together an entire video in like four to five hours. So that was, that was all I had on hand. But now that I actually had some time to spice it up, I replaced those panels with these uh, slat panels that you guys probably saw in my, uh, my studio. And also the more recent setup makeover season 10. I absolutely love the way this came out. My mom loves the way it came out. My wife on the other hand doesn't like it. No. You said you don't like it. No. You said, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't match the interior. So now you like it. I guess she had a change of heart. Now she likes it. But yeah, I definitely think um, this looks so much better than before. But yeah, that's enough about the loft. Uh, let's head on over to the balcony out here, which we don't even use. Clearly, because I don't know how to open it still. No. Is it this one? Oh, it's this one, okay. I'm not even kidding when I say this, but I feel like the only other time I was here was in the last house tour, <laughs> just to show this area. Um, in fact, I'll give you guys a before and after. Uh, when we were looking out here, I don't think we saw a single house on the top floor. So it'd be interesting to see what it looks like now compared to what, I think like a year ago or two years ago. There has been quite a bit of development done in this entire community. I think we're down to like our last street of houses on the top and it will be complete. There's like 500 houses in this entire community. So finally, no more construction noises. But anyways, that's our balcony. That's what I wanted to talk about. Let's go back inside. All right, let's head on over to the other edge of the house. So we went up the stairs, we made a ride to the loft, and now we are going across. Um, we have a very pointless balcony here. I have no clue what the purpose of this is. I call it the Romeo and Julia balcony. Ah, I got it this time, it was this one. Romeo, Romeo, where art thou? I don't know, I, other than that, I don't know what the purpose of this balcony is. My understanding behind it is for aesthetics. It's gotta be perfectly centered with the entrance of the house. So for symmetry reasons, I get it, but functional reasons, it doesn't make any sense. There's not any space to put like a coffee table or even a chair, it's just, it's weird. We have a different balcony over there, so why do this? Anyways, yeah, go back inside. I do wanna point out our beautiful chandelier after I get this random 
balloon out of the way. No, I'm not gonna Noah. Oh my god. Ah. Oh. I think I pulled a muscle. The chandelier was an interesting project. It took uh, three guys three days to hang this up, every single crystal, one at a time. It took a total of 24 hours, eight hours a day for three days. I think there's, what, a thousand pieces? I forget how many pieces there are, but it, it took a long time, and I think it was worth it. It looks, it looks absolutely magical. All right, moving past the chandelier to the right, we have just some empty space for um, storage, nothing exciting there. But in this room is our youngest daughter, Olivia. This is her nursery. She still sleeps in a crib. Um, we have a changing station over here with a dresser. And then my favorite chair in this entire house. This thing is extremely comfortable. Check this out. Oh yeah, boy. What you know about nursery chairs? Oh. Uh, I can already picture myself in 20 years, like this is the chair I'm gonna fall asleep on after reading the newspaper. Mm. All right, back to work. This here is Olivia's piggy bank. It is in a cute white and pink castle. It's got her name engraved on there. Where did you get this from, Amazon? Oh, it's a gift from my sister, Mary. She, uh, she gave this to Olivia when she was born. Whenever she gets money from her relatives or birthdays, um, we put it in here. And then when she's old enough, she can take the money out and buy whatever she wants. And over here is Olivia's ultrasound picture when she was in mommy's tummy. How many weeks was she here or months? Four. Four months? She was four to five months, tiny little peanut. We have another bathroom, of course. All the bedrooms have its own bathroom. All right, moving on to the other side. Uh, so we got two doors. This door leads into our laundry room. I'm usually never in there. There's a built-in sink, which the wife loves. Our last laundry room didn't have one, so that is a nice upgrade. Uh, it's a fairly small room, I would say, but it's got a ton of storage space um, and it gets the job done. So, you know, we can't complain. And this room is our oldest daughter. Shayla. Yeah, this is the princess's lair. She is the house princess. Um, we're gonna be giving this room a makeover as well. We're gonna be getting rid of this two-story bed because we changed our mind and I don't think Olivia will be able to sleep upstairs. So we're gonna get rid of this and give her her own dedicated full-size bed and then kind of just revamp the entire room to personalize it a little bit more. Over here is probably one of her favorite things, if not the favorite thing in this entire bedroom. This is a shelf that we made for her books. She absolutely loves when, um, when her dad, when I read books to her. So once she's uh, done brushing her teeth, she would come here, pick a book for me to read. She loves the books, either with princess stuff in it or with these sounds that are baked in. Okay, well, you get the idea. Uh, she likes the, the stuff where she can like press it and then you can hear a sound. So it's either this one or Peppa the Pig. This is actually one of her favorite books. She loves, I think that's her favorite cartoon, right? Peppa the Pig right now. Currently that's her top, top favorite show. This here is her dresser. Once again, we have an ultrasound photo. How old was she in this one? Same, Same four to five months. Tiny little peanut. Daddy's little princess. Uh, we got her piggy bank over here as well. She's got way more moolah in here, obviously because she's the oldest. She was born first. Um, same concept when she's old enough and she wants to break it and buy whatever she wants, we're gonna give her that option. So we got S for sweet, super Shayla. My beautiful, beautiful daughter. Uh, we have her baby photos over here. I think I showed you guys this in the first uh, setup tour as well, or house tour. These are, this is the newborn photo shoot that we had with her. <laughs> I don't know why I'm crying. <sighs> Sorry about that guys. Uh, that just hit me pretty hard. Um, she's all grown up now. She's um, almost three years. This April, this April she'll be three years old. Wow. Look at 
this bathroom is where we have our morning and night ritual. <laughs> she would come over here, stand on top of the stool, and she would brush her teeth while I um, make her hair, where I get her ready for preschool. For some reason this past week, she wouldn't let her mom do the hair. She's always asking, Daddy, Daddy has to do the hair. Let's, do, let's, let's let Mama do it. Okay, 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 Papa will do it. Papa will do it. No, Mommy, come here. You like it? Yeah? And I, I'm the worst when it comes to making the hair. I don't know why she wants me to do it when I can't do a good job. But that's kind of been uh, the battle this past week. So she comes here, she brushes her, brushes her teeth, um, we get the hair ready. We dress her up and then we take her and her sister to preschool. Olivia started preschool actually um, four days ago, yeah, this Monday. So they're going to preschool together, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for the bathroom. Let's, uh, let's head on over to the other room. So before we go into the master bed, I do want to show you this little shrine we created. The purpose of this area is mostly for um, vacation pictures. So every time we travel out of state, we take a romantic or spicy photo together and then we would find a frame that's sold in that location. So for example, last time we went to Dubai, we found a frame from Dubai and then we took the picture out, put it in here, and then when we get back home, we basically just place it here. It's gonna, it's gonna be a collection. It's gonna be a collection of, I guess, travel photos essentially we haven't had time to travel a lot because of work and the babies we've only been to like new york and dubai together but eventually the idea is to get a frame from that country or state that we're in take a nice spicy photo and then post it here eventually we want to have like shelves and shelves of photos and now ladies and gents the climax of the video the master suite this is where the magic happens So yeah, huge improvement, um, huge difference from before. If you guys saw the original house tour, we only had like the mattress, uh, a few nightstands and the dresser. It was looking very empty. But now we finally got our king bed with the headboard. Uh, we added a rug and we kind of just decorated the rest of the room. We added a painting, a vertical mirror. It looks more complete. It looks way nicer than before in my opinion. We actually had this in the loft before. Uh, we had a 65 inch before, so we brought this in and upgraded our master bed because we're always in here after 8 p.m. when the babies are asleep. So I believe this is a 77 inch OLED from LG. I forget the model name, but this is where we kick it at night with the wifey. We have, um, you know, we drink some wine sometimes, have some snacks, Netflix and chill, Hulu Plus and Thrust, and even some Amazon Prime and have a good time. One of my favorite features of this bed is the built-in LEDs. You basically rub your head against the headboard and it lights up. It comes in clutch because we don't have to constantly get up and hit the switch to turn the lights on in the entire room. So if we need to find something out of our nightstands or you know we need light at that moment, we can just slap the headboard and we get it. Super useful, we use it pretty much every night. Uh, before I show you guys the master bath, I do want to go inside the, um, the armory. I made some nice updates since then. So this here is our storage slash armory. Um, the wife got the big closet, so she gave me the smaller one and then she told me I could do whatever I want. So I decided to make it an armory. Um, there was nothing in here at first, it was just a carpet. We had a custom storage units here and I spiced it up. I spiced up the rest of the room. I think there's a vlog where I uploaded um, and I showed you guys kind of how I customized this room with the panels and stuff. But in the center here, we have my most prized possession. Juggernaut Tactical AR-15. Um, we used to take this to the range, I think last year, it's been, it's been a while. Uh, we haven't been there in over a year because of work and with the babies, but we, um, it, it's, it's long overdue. We gotta go. The wife knows how to shoot this. Uh, it's one of my favorite guns actually, take it to the range. It's just, it's such a fun gun to shoot. It's fun, it's mostly stock. We just had a, a, a sight on there. I used to have a, a grip in the front, but it's very uncomfortable with this gun. Um, so we just kind of keep it as, simple as possible. 
In this drawer over here, we have my other gun, the XD9 pistol. This is mostly for home invasion reasons, but we take it to the range as well because it's just a fun little gun to shoot with. Obviously I keep it unloaded, but I do have the magazines loaded and ready to go in case somebody tries to mess with me and the family. So someone comes in, I rush in here, pop, pop. Get my stance ready to go, you know, I, I lean like in Call of Duty, around the corner. <laughs> I learned that in Modern Warfare 3, all right? <laughs> all right? I probably shouldn't be playing around with this right now. Like that? That's why you married me. Uh, so over here, we also have our headphones and our glasses, safety first. So when we go to the range, we pack this all in a bag and then we take it down there. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then for lighting, we do have some nano leaf panels. Added some over here on the bottom of the shelves and then we got some over there on the wall. Let's turn these on. See what they look like right now. Looks nice. Yeah, it adds a bit of lighting. The lights are cool and all for aesthetic reasons, but the main reason why I put the lights over here is so that I can use this as a workbench. I like to light it up here and then take out my cleaning kit to disassemble the guns and clean it every time we go to the range. Or I should say after we come back from the range. That's pretty much it for the armory. Let's head back out to the master bath. And this, ladies and gents, is our master bath. We got hers and then we got the his on the right side uh, and then a tub in the middle, which honestly, even till now, I'm just so confused with the placement of the mirror because if you're sitting in the tub, you can't really see over the window unless you're standing and like showering yourself, which makes no sense. I wish the window was a bit more, maybe at least tub level because that way if you're sitting down, you can enjoy the beautiful view, but I'm not an architect, so I don't know. There's probably some safety reasons. We got our master shower. We can fit comfortably up to eight people. Don't ask me how I know that, but you probably also noticed why it's dark compared to the rest of the room. And that's because for showers specifically, I like it dark in here. It gives me a sense of seclusion. I, just, I feel more comfortable, more secluded showering in the dark. I don't even turn the lights on on the top. So that in combination with the beautiful pebble floor and the rain head shower transports me into this tranquil, location so i love the shower here it's awesome and then walking in here is our master closet i guess so this room was an optional upgrade when we bought the house um, the house comes standard with five bedrooms but we had the choice of upgrading this to a master retreat which was just an open space and the wife and i talked about it and at the time we had no need for a fifth bedroom we have only two daughters, you know, we got the master bed for ourselves and we got a guest room downstairs. So we thought we can use the master retreat and convert it into a master closet, which is what you guys see here. Uh, this took about six or seven months to do. It was one of the biggest, most expensive projects uh, we had in this house. But honestly, I, I think it came out pretty good. We have a center island over here where most of the jewelry stuff is on the top. And then we got a bunch of drawers for storage. Out of all the jewelry here, Guess how many pieces are mine? You don't have to guess long. It's literally just these three pieces right here. My previous wedding rings. That's not even mine actually, just two. Two rings in this entire island is mine. I'm a simple man, what can I say? Um, oh, why, why aren't you wearing your wedding ring? This is your ring, isn't it? Yeah. Gym. Oh, you went to the gym? Oh, so you go to the gym and you put this in here so you don't scratch it, smart. But yeah, I'm a simple man. I don't really like jewelry. I mean, the only thing you'll see me wear is my ring, my wedding ring, and then my, uh, the white watch that you guys see in the videos. This side over here is normally where I keep all the fancy clothes, um, the clothes that I change into when we're going out. Over here is most of the winter stuff. So like long sleeves, really just long sleeves, I guess. That's the only things over here. Again, all the nicer clothes we usually hang. And then the cheaper stuff, like the comfy stuff, we keep in these drawers. If you ask me what type of clothes I prefer wearing on an everyday basis, cheap and comfortable. Like sweats, shirt. As long as I'm comfortable, I'm good. I'm good. Over here in the corner, Lord have mercy. You have no more space for shoes. What are you gonna do if you get one more pair of shoes? You gonna use my shelves? Jesus, I didn't even know you had this many shoes.
this is this is the wife's corner she has uh, a pair of shoes for every single day of the year i think we're approaching 365 pairs of shoes you don't even use more than half of these when's the last time you wore these my birthday okay that was a wrong pick anyways i almost forgot about her other corner of the closet her bags to be fair, she does she does use these more often than the shoes because um, every time we go out, I think she like rolls the dice and decides to pick one unless uh, you try and match it with your outfit. I think you match the colors with your outfit, right? Yeah, so it, th these are mostly based on, I guess, what outfit she's wearing. Luckily, she didn't use up all the shelves. We still got some space for future expandability, but you know. Now let's go to my corner. As you can see, we are severely outnumbered. I don't have as many shoes as her. And to be honest, I'm not really a shoe guy. I wear the same thing like multiple times. You want to know my favorite shoes? Bruh. My slippers that I wear every single day. I take these wherever I go when I'm traveling, when I'm doing setup makeover. You guys will see this same slipper. I kid you not, even for a setup makeover season 10, I was wearing these exact slippers. They're better, they're so much better. It's not about the price. It's about the quality and the comfort. And Amazon, Amazon uh, Amazon's my go-to. But if I had to pick my favorite shoe here, it would have to be my most recent pickup from uh, Louis Vuitton. I think these are absolute fire. Uh, I haven't had a chance to wear them just yet because I picked them up, I think two months ago? Three. three months? Oh, it's been three months, wow. You can tell we, got, we don't go out as often, unfortunately, but when I do, I'm gonna be uh, rocking these bad boys for sure. Yeah, other than that, I don't really buy shoes. My wife buys more than half of these most of the time. She'd come up to me like, hey babe, look, I bought you some shoes. I'm like, I'm like, why? It's just gonna go on the shelf and sit here for like months, sometimes even years. But yeah, that's basically it about this corner. Over here is my wife's section. She has a lot of corners in this closet dedicated for her in case you guys haven't noticed, but this is her vanity that we've created. Um, she comes here, sits in front of this massive mirror only to grab the most tiniest mirror <laughs> and do her makeup like this. Like you have a massive mirror in front of you, yet this this is more comfortable for her. <laughs> I have no words. Uh, why do we why do we even put this mirror, to be honest? We could have saved some money. No, I use it. She uses it sometimes. Other than that, yeah, that's it. That's our master closet. Now, ladies and gents, the main event of the evening our backyard. Gets harder after the fourth one. Yeah, that was easy. This, ladies and gents, is our backyard. Opening up the pocket doors completely transforms this open space. You get free flow from the living room to the backyard. It is, it's a completely different vibe, to be honest. It's perfect for big parties, you know, when we're doing, um, let's say our children's birthday parties and we have a bunch of guests going in and out. It just, it expands. It expands our backyard and we absolutely love it. This entire project took about, I would say almost a year. It was crazy. Uh, it took so long because of the rain and materials were out of stock. It was a very long process to get everything done. But in the end, I think both my wife and I are fairly happy with how it turned out. We wanted to go with a um, modern and minimalistic design for our backyard to complement the interior of our house. Uh, and honestly, I think it came out looking good. Um, the first things we did was we added this safety fence all around the pool, obviously because we have two little kids. Safety is our number one concern to make sure that we can prevent a disaster. We've heard some very horror stories in the past, so this was definitely the first thing. Once they're old enough, we can pop these out. These, these are actually not glued to the floor. They're just basically stuck inside poles, which we can easily remove. So this is just temporary until um, our daughters are old enough. We got two lounges over here for bathing in the sun, getting our tan on in the summer. We would normally just go into the jacuzzi for about 30 minutes and then we'd come here and lay down and get nice and uh, crispy. All right, so we'll start with the corner of our backyard. This is where our fire pit is. We have a little bit of a bridge going across the trench into our fire pit area. We got custom cushions 
all around. I believe this place seats uh, 16 people comfortably, four per side. Um, and then we have a fire pit in the middle and the gas line is actually connected to our gas line of the house. So we don't have to bring like a propane tank and, and light it up every single time. So that's super convenient. Of course, we got our beautiful view in the backyard over here. We try to keep the, um, the fire pit and the pool above ground as much as possible so that we can appreciate the, uh, the awesome view that we have in the backyard. If you guys look around in the back, you'll kind of see some speakers. We have speakers all around the entire backyard so we can maintain a balanced level of music. So when we're doing our pool parties, um, we like to blast the music here. And it doesn't matter what part of the backyard you're in, you're gonna hear the music equally. So moving our way around to my favorite thing in the backyard is our spa or jacuzzi or spool, whatever you guys call it here in the United States. It was a smart decision not going with a full-size pool this time around because the pool in our last home was only used maybe twice or three times a year and we just we used up so much space in our backyard so this time we decided to go with a spa and use the other half of the backyard for a fire pit logically this just made the most sense to us and honestly i'm glad we made that decision also one of the reasons why i wanted to go with the infinity look is because of this you guys hear that we have water spilling on all four sides into the trench. And when the water splashes onto the other water, you get this therapeutic, relaxing sound. It is one of the reasons why I love this spa so much. Sometimes we literally just come outside with a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and we just sit and we just listen to this. It melts away our stress sometimes. The spa also has built-in RGB. Hey, Southwest, that's our plane. The spa also has built-in RGB. I can control the lights of my entire backyard and the spa, the blowers, the temperature, everything on my app. So let's say if I want to turn on the bubblers, for example, all I got to do is tap on a button. There you go. Turning it on takes about two to three seconds, but shutting it off, three, two, one, it's nearly instant, about a one second delay, which is really cool. All right, moving back down into the other side of our backyard, which is our outside kitchen. We throw some pretty epic parties, I'm not gonna lie. Things get wild here in the backyard when we have our pool parties. Um, we love to entertain our guests here. We got shots going, any type of liquor you can imagine. Uh, we throw on a barbecue. You know, sometimes you like having chicken and steak tacos. Uh, we have a massive slab in the middle that seats four people on each side. But you know, when you're when you're drinking, you don't normally sit. You like to just move around constantly. Uh, we do have a full fridge, not really a full size, but it fits all the drinks and things you want to keep cold. We have a full functioning sink over here with some more storage, and then we got some more storage units over there on the left side. My wife wants me to show you guys our trees. So we have uh, two fruit trees in our backyard. I think lemon is a fruit. I'm not sure but um, we're saving $10 a year because we can just go in the backyard and grab a lemon whenever we want. The other tree is a pomegranate tree, but we don't see any pomegranates now. And I think in the two years that we've been here, we've only had one full juicy pomegranate. Where are the pomegranates, by the way? It's not, it's not seasoned? Oh, okay, that's probably why. But yeah, this is supposed to be a pomegranate tree. So yeah, we got, you know, backyard access to some fruits, which is cool. And we have a little bit of a seating area over here, which is normally where we come and sit down and have our drinks and listen to the therapeutic sound. The entire backyard and front yard took about a year. It took 11 months to complete. It was a very long process because of materials being out of stock and the weather was not in our favor. Unfortunately, we had a lot of rainfall, but um, overall we are satisfied with how everything came out. Now it's time for the studio, my favorite room on the outside. Following this way back towards our house, to the left is, I just got shocked, is where the money maker is, ladies and gents. This is where I shoot all of my videos. You guys have probably seen this room many times um, in my previous vlogs, but this is as clean as it gets, typically before I start a project. 
I just came back from Micro Center yesterday. Uh, they challenged me to do an all razor theme setup. So I'm actually gonna begin working on this right after this video. And when I start a project, like a setup build or a PC build, there are so many freaking boxes everywhere. This place gets very cramped. And it's one of the things I'm not really happy with. It's just the amount of space I have to work with. So that's probably why we are considering buying a bigger house in the next two years, but it's not 100% set in stone. But if I were to move, it would have to be mostly because I want a bigger office space. But anyways, yeah, this is basically where I come. Uh, you guys have seen this backyard millions of times. This is where I stand and make my videos. What is happening guys, Evan Tech Source. Welcome back to another video. That's usually how I start my intros here. Got my laptop here usually for like my notes and stuff. I'm doing setup wars. And then I got a 27 inch 4K display hanging from the ceiling so I can check myself out and make sure that I'm in focus because there is no camera person, except when I'm doing tours and stuff. My wife once in a while helps out, but usually I'm here by myself. And now we're back to the wide angle lens. So let's go ahead and finish up the tour. It's crazy to think how far the channel has come 10 years ago when I uploaded my very first unboxing video. It all still feels like a dream, you know. I, I am so blessed to be able to wake up and do what I love every single day. Everything that I do, I do it for my family. I do it so that my daughters have a better life than me. Most of you guys know that we had nothing when we came into this country over 30 years ago. We were very poor. We didn't have the best childhood. My mom did her best raising three kids all by herself. It was tough, but you know, she did it. I wouldn't be sitting here right now talking to you guys if it wasn't for her tenacity. So mom, if you're watching this video, thank you for doing your best and for not giving up. But I am fortunate enough to be in a position where I can guarantee that my children will have a better childhood than us. And I will continue to do everything in my power to make sure that they will succeed in life. But of course, none of this would even be possible without subscribers. So I do wanna thank you guys for supporting the channel for the past few years, especially if you've been here since the beginning. You know who you are. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the tour, and I will see you guys very soon in the next one.